Hey everybody, it's Karen Bryant for MMA Heat. I'm here with Patrick Cote, who is facing Joe Riggs at UFC 186. And as we all know, this card has gone through some changes, uh, but was there ever an issue with this fight for you guys? Uh, no, not really. Actually, uh, Joe and I were supposed to fight a couple of years ago, and uh, this fight was supposed to happen a couple of times, but finally we're going to square off in the cage in a couple of days. Perfect. Uh, you know, it's interesting. W what was it before that made you guys have to reschedule it? I think that was in 2007. Uh, that was in local show here in Montreal, and uh, yeah, Joe got hurt. And after that, uh, you know, the fight never happened. But we're both veterans, and uh, it's gonna be a good, uh, it's gonna be a good fight, you know, between two veterans of the sport. Well, I was gonna say because you know the man has been known to shoot himself, so. <laughs> yeah, actually, it's uh, it's pretty. It, it, he hurt himself more than. The couple of before. Right. So listen, how do you feel about this stylistically? As you just said, you guys are both veterans of the sport. Uh, how do you think your skill sets play out? He has, he has almost 50 fights under his belt, so for sure he's, he's very uh, experienced. Uh, he's a veteran. He has a lot of fights, but I think I fought a better guy in my career. You know, when you when you compare, you know, the 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 opponent we had, uh, I think I fought better guy. I fought for the title too. Uh, I think I, this is my advantage. Even if I have less fight, I still have 30 fights, but uh, I have le a little bit less fight than him. But uh, if you if you're watching who I fought in my career. I think this is a, a big advantage for me. Well, and certainly too, with the amount of fights that uh, that you both have, but you know, with a lot of experience, also comes a lot of damage to your body. You know, so so <laughs> you, you road warriors, though sometimes you know, it's 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 so yeah, actually, yeah. It, it is, it is. But you know what? It, it, it's been knocked down a couple of times, and I've never been. My life, so uh, I'm planning to put another knockout on, on this uh, on this record, and uh, you know I'm going there to uh, to get back w w about who I am. You know, when I fought Thompson, I was thinking too much in the in the, in the cage. I was flat. Uh, I was I, I didn't have any explosion in me. Uh, I don't want to take anything away from uh, from uh, Thompson, but uh, you know I wasn't myself. I didn't think I fought great. Uh, but you know, when I fought in, Mont in Montreal, when I fought in Canada, I always had a lot of success. So I can't wait. Well, I was going to ask you about that because, you know, sometimes when people fight at home, uh, the crowd really buoys them and it's a wonderful thing. But, you know, there is always that flip side of all that pressure of, of you know, appealing to your home crowd and not wanting to let down your fans. But you, you see it definitely as a positive thing then. I like fighting Montreal. Uh, first of all, the crowd is just awesome. You know, it's it's very very a loud crowd. Uh, I can sleep in my own bed. I can cook my own food. I can take my own jacuzzi. You know, it's 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 perfect. And uh, you know, when I when I fight in Canada, I think I'm 14 and one when I fight. In in Canada so for me it's been uh it's been uh it's been pretty good uh, fighting here I, lo I love fighting here for sure there's a, a lot more media that I have to take care of mm -hmm. but you know I'm working the media too when I'm not fighting so for me it's good you know it, it, it's okay and uh no like I said I, I like fighting here this is my home and uh you know like I said I can't wait to uh, April 25th Cool. Well, you know, it's interesting that you brought the point up, though, about sleeping in your own bed and that kind of thing, because I've had this conversation with a lot of fighters that they, even when it's a home game, prefer to stay in the fight hotel, though, because there's something about, you know, switching into fight head. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, that can be dangerous if you're at home and you still got to walk the dog and do the, you know what I mean? That doesn't factor into your game, though? No, I don't think so. Like, yeah. like you said at the, at the beginning, uh, I have a lot of experience now. Yeah. Have 30 fights, so I know I know the game. I know yeah. how, how it's supposed to do to to, to go, and uh, you know I I rather to be at home than staying at the hotel, eating in a restaurant. Don't know what they're putting food. Sure. You know I like to cook my food. I like to eat my food. I like to sleep in my bed, yeah. not in the middle of the downtown with all the police serene and all, all those things. You know a, a lot of a lot of things. So. Uh, uh, I like it, and uh, you know, I stay a couple. I stay outside the downtown, so I stay in a quiet place, right. so I can get back at home and just relax and just. I can be in my. I can be in my bubble. I can be in my zone when I'm home. That's no problem with that. Yeah. Is it you know interesting when you uh, you do call the fights like you said you call the UFC fights uh, in French language and you did you do that even when you for that period of time were not in the organization. 
Uh, yes, yes. I, I, I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm a good, I have a good relationship with the UFC. Yeah. You know, the thing is, uh, but you have to understand that before they're your friend, they're your boss. Yeah. So if you don't, <laughs> if you don't uh, perform well, you know, this is this is what's gonna happen. You know, I lost fights and. You know, I got kicked out as a fighter, but I was always being part of the UFC as a commentator, as a as as a TV broadcaster. So mm -hmm. it, it's good, but I understand the point that it's a business that they they roll a business and they have to they have to put the best the best show as possible. And uh, this is my responsibility to win fight. This is their, their, this is it's not their fault if I lost. It's mm -hmm. I fall. So I, you know, they, they they like to keep fighters sometime more, uh, even with three or four loss, yeah. because they give a good show, and that that's yeah. that's all about that. It's all it's all about the the show that they put on TV for the fans, for the crowd, for for everybody. Uh, but no, I like I said, I'll, I have a good relationship with the UFC uh, as a fighter and as a, a broadcaster. And is that something that you plan to do? I, I'm not sure how many fights you have left in your career, but is do you think you would go into full-time broadcasting afterwards? Maybe, maybe. Uh, you know, I I work on my after career since three or four years now. I have I have a I have business companies. Uh, I'm working a lot on t French TV here, yeah. so I like working on TV. But never know, you know. One day maybe they didn't like they they're not gonna like my face anymore in front of the camera. You know, you never know. Yeah. So I, I, you know, I was smart enough to put my money and put uh, you know, my all my energy to to build other companies outside the cage. So the the, mo the, the best thing about that it's I'm I'm fighting because I, I still love it. This yeah. is my passion, not because I need it. So it's ten times more fun, easier going to the gym. I've I've always fun. It's because I want it and it's awesome. Mm -hmm. Very nice. How much fun, you know, I see you're, where you're sitting, you have all the Ultimate Fighter shirts behind you. Uh, that's quite a process. You know, you always hear from the people that do that show. Some people love it and say it was a great experience. Some people say, oh my God, never again. What was your opinion of that? That was awesome. Yeah. You know, I had a blast in both seasons, you know, as a contestant and as a, as a, as a coach. Uh, it's a it's a lot different, you know. As a coach, it's a lot more work you have yeah. to do. You have to put training, game plan. You have to take right. care of every single guy. They they are different. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, no, for me that was that was easy. You know, I've been in the army for seven years. Mm -hmm. I served, you know, in Bosnia and a couple other place. And after that, you know, being stuck in a house for six weeks, eating thirty box steak every every uh, yeah. every night. Training twice a day with Randy Couture, George St. Pierre, Matthews, all those guys. Right. At, when I was starting my career, I couldn't ask for more. And uh, no, for me that was that was a very very great experience. Nice. So is that is that your house where you're sitting, or you at a? a yeah, this is my uh, this is my game room. Yeah. Damn. Yeah. <laughs> Looks nice. <laughs> um, when you were in the military, you said you went to Bosnia. Were you in combat? What What did you do? Oh yeah, I was uh, in the infantry. I was in oh, the wow. army, so we went there to protect the country after after the big war in uh, uh, 1992, 1993. I went there in 2001. Uh, you know, there was still a little uh, little things going on, but the major part of the war was was done. But uh, you know, it's a crazy life experience. You know, it's uh, I have good friends from there that I can't share experience with anybody else because we, we've been part of of the army together. We served together. Mm -hmm. You know, in 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 very hard countries. Uh, but uh, you know, I always say the same thing. I never regret my time there, but I will never go back. <laughs> And I, I want to know your opinion on this because, you know, I work with Brian Stan quite often and other uh, fighters who have military service. And I know there is a, a sensitivity we have sometimes when we say, hey, you know, these two guys are going into war and they're going into battle in the octagon. And, you know, we don't want to make light of what people do in real service. You know, how do you feel about that having been, you know, in both places? Are you, are you, are you bothered when people say that? Uh, <laughs> No, not really. You yeah. know, the thing is, uh, I don't think you have to take that very seriously. Uh, you know, it's there's war everywhere. You mm -hmm. know, it, there's, it's just different kind of war. Yeah. You know, when two guys going in a cage and they, they they go toe to toe, that's a war. Trust me, I know. I've been there. It's <laughs> it's it's really really hard. It's very different, but that's a war. You know, the people who try to beat cancer, that's a war against a, against a disease. That's yeah. a, that's the same thing. So you have to you have to be. Uh, 
you have to take part of you know every single thing and you know make your own judgment about that about that but uh yeah like i said you know a lot of people uh you know i didn't lose anybody who were close to me when i was in service in, in uh in the army so maybe that's why i react like that uh you know i understand that some guy some people who went to iraq or afghanistan yeah. they lost guys on the field and they feel really bad about it when they heard that i can understand that but from my part i'm pretty good yeah nice you know i think the first time i met you was in Vegas, uh, it might have been when Forrest and Tito were fighting, I don't, or, or was Ch it was Chalen Anderson, I think uh, you were on that card, right? Uh, yeah, that was, yeah, that was the, the same, yeah, exactly, UFC 148, yeah. yeah that was insane, uh, was that, uh, <laughs> I'm just curious, you've been, you know, uh, doing this for so long, you know, what's the biggest event you've been a part of, as a, as a fan, because I have to believe that you're a fight fan yourself, you know, have you been a part of one event where you were able to just kind of sit back and be like, all right, you know what, this is kind of amazing. Yeah, actually, UFC 100, I was there yeah. as a commentator in Vegas, and that was just insane, the entire week, uh, I was there, and that was uh, that was unreal. Uh, you know, the fan expos, all the thing went uh, went through before the fight. The yeah. fights, the the show, uh, the the show as the UFC 100 was amazing. You know, all the fights was crazy. Yeah. So you know that was a success from you know the beginning to the end. Right. Uh, but as a fighter, for sure, for me, it's my title fight. You know, mm -hmm. UFC when the uh, UFC 90 yeah. for me that was the biggest. Uh, the, the biggest uh, thing in my career, you know, unfortunately, I got the bad luck and bad time, but, uh, you know, I can say that I fought for the UFC World title, you know, I can say that. Absolutely. <laughs> and, you know, listen, Anderson is pretty good. Uh, <laughs> oh, he's awesome. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> do you, you know, are, are you, do, do you look back on that? I mean, obviously, it is a great achievement to be able to fight for the title. I, was that something that you afterward you know, watched over and over again and kind of beat yourself up about or, are, you know, after, especially a title fight, but are you the kind of guy after a fight, after a loss that just goes crazy on it or do you just kind of let it go and move on? It depends it depend how the, the fight went, but, yeah. uh, you know, I, I, I'm going to watch a couple of times, but it's I don't need to watch it like 50 times to understand what I did wrong when I, when I lose a fight. Uh, I I I to, to know exactly after the fight what I did wrong mm -hmm. and why I, I didn't win the fight. Uh, you know, I watch I watch a lot of fights. It's it's more it's more fun. You know, yeah. you know the knockout, all those things. Now I, those fights I can watch 20, 25 times. You know, no problem with that. But uh, I guess, yeah, I'm sure you learn more. They say you learn more in the in the in the defeat than right. than when you win. But uh, you know, like I said, when when you have a lot of experience, you don't need to watch your your loss, you know, a lot of times. Right. You know, it's, I, I'm on a um, a women's tennis team now, and I, you know, I I was very competitive when I uh, was younger, played a lot of sports, and was you know very good at it. Uh, I'm a little older now, and I, I still expect myself to be really good at stuff, uh, <laughs> even though I've only been playing tennis for like a, a year and a half or whatever. But I have found that, that spending a lot of time with athletes and stuff, I felt like, yeah, I'm going to really be able to get my head right, and if it doesn't go well, and this, and I lost a match, I was pissed. <laughs> and oh, sure. I don't know how, I, you know, and I know I did learn more, but I was so mad. There's nothing wrong about uh, being mad of losing. Yeah. I don't think that... You know, being a good loser i don't believe that you know a lot of people now you have to learn how to how to lose and I, man i don't believe that at all you know yeah. this is this is a competition this is a you have to compete and a lot of guys and i was one of those guys too before this that was my living that was that was the money i was taking to to live to put food on my table so you can't be comfortable about losing in this sport yeah no i i i really you know our season is about to start now and i'm like i want full contact tennis i want to wreck <laughs> <laughs> but it's hard because I end up, uh, I, I might get in trouble because you can, they can kind of call you for a foul if you, you like talk to yourself, you know what I mean? So I have to like shut my mouth a little bit because I end up kind of cursing myself out, eh, whatever. This is, now I'm looking to you to be my coach apparently. <laughs> 
Um, <laughs> you obviously, I can't ask a, a Canadian a, 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 a about MMA without bringing up, of course, George. You mentioned him before. Um, do you think that he would ever come back? Is that somebody, you know, in terms of, uh, of, of what you guys carry, the, the sort of Canadian mantle of, of fighting, and George is so well known for that, is that somebody you think would come back? Do you, do you think you would want him to come back and fight? I think he, he want to come back. Yeah. Uh, I think that's it. You know, he's pretty young to take his retirement. You know, the thing yeah. is that that's the thing. It's not about money. Everybody knows that he has a lot, a lot, a lot of money. Yes. It's not about that. If he's coming back, it's not about that. It's got is if he's coming back, it's gonna be for his personal reason. Yeah. Maybe a one last fight, something like that. Because he's so young that. Mm -hmm. He's, that's all he did in his life, you know, fighting and competing and be yeah. the best in the world. Now he's, he's at home. Yes, he has a lot of projects. He has, you know, movies, all those things. But he, he is a competitor. This is, this is who, who he is. When he wants to compete, he, he wants to perform. Right. And that's, that, that's who he is. So like every time you know a couple you know every two or three months you you can hear or you can read that oh George's getting itchy to to coming back and all those things but if it's gonna happen who knows you know but uh, you know for sure for the the MMA world you know not just in Canada but I think you know international mm -hmm. it's gonna be a good thing uh, but if it's gonna be a good thing for him. I don't know, you know, Elef has the best mm -hmm. fighter in the world. Elef has the best welterweight, welterweight in the UFC history too. Yeah. And if he's coming back, it's going to be in the special, uh, special, it's going to be a special reason. Right. And, uh, it's going to have a lot of money, you know, yeah. at the end. <laughs> For sure. But, you know, but that's the thing. Yeah. There really is nothing left to prove. Uh, yeah. you know, I, but but yeah, I think he's such a competitive person that I feel like, you know, whatever he does, he wants to be a winner. And so he might get bored, like doing something that's not competitive, you know? Yeah, you yeah, are. You're absolutely right. And uh, it's still, it's still I don't know he's always doing it, but mm -hmm. uh, good for him, you know, because he's still, you know, in, in crazy shape. He's, he's training like almost full time too. Mm -hmm. uh, I think I, I really think that he, he want to come back because of his last fight. I think the last fight was a, a lot of controversy ar mm -hmm. around this fight with uh, with uh, John Hendricks, and uh, I think it's still in his in his head that he want to just prove his, the point that he's the best. Yeah. Uh, but you know what? Like you said, he has nothing he left to prove. He, he beat so many records. He, he beat mm -hmm. everybody, and. Uh, you know, even if he at the end, you know, a lot of people were complaining about, you know, his fight was boring and all yeah, those things. Yeah. He didn't have to go toe to toe with those guys and, you know, getting punched in his face for nothing. You know, he was winning with his wrestling. He was winning with, with, with his own technique. When you're a champion, the challenger has to beat the champion. It's yeah, not yeah. it's not the, the opposite. Right, so right. he did what he had to do. And this is, that was, for me, okay, maybe that wasn't very entertaining, but that was a smart thing to do. Right, that not right. going there, just receiving punch in, in, in their head for nothing. And uh, I think it was pretty smart. Yeah, well, I was at that fight, and I do remember sitting there, and uh, Johnny was pretty successful for a bit, and I was sitting there to Dave Schaller, who you know, of course, and I was like, is this, is this happening? You know, is somebody actually sticking it to George? Like, what is going on here? But, yeah, my heart kind of broke for him afterwards in that post-fight press conference. You could see the guy has so much, so much going on in his mind, you know, and doesn't want to let the fans sound, but it's finally, like, at this point, listen, man, I got to look out for myself here uh, and my mental stability and stuff. I just know that was a really tough situation, and however long it takes him to, you know, get, get all that sorted out, uh, you know, who are we to say what he should be doing? You know, he's, I just... Yeah. Or he's been so good for so long. I don't know. Yeah, well, the thing is, when it, it's hard to go on top, but to stay there, it's ten yeah. times harder, you know. And he did it for so many years. I think he had like nine or ten title defense. That's mm -hmm. that's a lot. That's just amazing. Yeah. You know, this is number one organization in the world. The best fighter in the world are in the UFC, mm -hmm. and everybody trained to beat you bad. Right. And every time he came. And he, and he won the fight. Oh, it's a lot of pressure. He was the best pay-per-view setter too. So the UFC put a lot of pressure on, on him, mm -hmm. uh, and he was putting a lot of pressure on himself too. And uh, you know, sometimes you know when you're you're at this level on top all the time, all the time, and you can't have 
you can't have a, a, a slowdown in your training when you're a champion. Everybody's training to beat you. So it's a lot of a lot of pressure, a lot of training. And I understand that maybe one day you're just like, man, I need a break now. Okay, come, let's go. Give my space. I need a break. And he did it. And I think he, I think he did the right thing. Yeah, very nice. So when you're not fighting, uh, what do you do? Do you have other hobbies or are you just a guy that's just fighting all the time? No, actually, I'm living just across the water. I have a boat. So we're doing a lot of uh, wake surfing. Oh, no. This is this is what I do, and uh, I play a lot of golf in uh, in uh, in summer. Yeah. In winter, uh, in winter, uh, it's more uh, it's more receive people in my house. I, I there's always somebody in my in my house. You know, I, I love having people here. Uh, but in 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 uh, summer season, we we're all the time on the boat or uh, or uh, on the golf uh, golf course. Oh, yeah. I love golf. I'm going to boat or, or the golf, so 90% of the time I'm going to the boat. Nice. Well, I love golf, and it's funny that I, uh, Jordan, while we were talking the other day, uh, he's amazing. You know, I, I I started to learn how to golf when I first moved out here to L.A., and I had played baseball before, and so I was like, I got a pretty good swing and everything, so I took to the game uh, pretty well. But, um, but, you know, you really need to commit the time to it. It's one of those, you know, it's frustrating if you just go and you don't play often. But, uh, but how amazing was he? I mean, the kid is phenomenal i know you enjoyed that he's he's awesome you know 21 years old won the master it's uh it's just unreal. Just with caddy, it's awesome too you know his caddy three years ago was a yeah. math teacher in the sixth sixth grade so it's just uh, everything around G, uh, around speed it's just amazing and it, it's a, it's a new, it's fresh, it's fresh for uh, for the girl to have a, a, a new young guy like that. He's a little bit less uh, flashy, yeah. Tiger, but I think you know, skills wise, he can't he can't be at the same level as as Tiger when he when he was young. Uh, but you're right. This is the the world the the, the world artist sport in the world. The golf. It's yeah. it's so hard. Uh, but I love it. I, I used to, I used to, uh, to, to play on the, uh, the junior national rank oh, wow, when right. I was in, uh, in Canada. Yeah. And, uh, don't ask me why I took the fight. No, I was just going to say, like, um... don't ask me why. I don't know why, <laughs> but, uh, I think this is the best professional life for, uh, an athlete, a yeah. professional athlete to be a golfer. It's a, it's a, an amazing life, but yeah. you have to be good. Well, my neighbor, a former neighbor of mine once took me over to play at, uh, Riviera. Uh, you want to talk about intimidating it's like oh my god like you know but it's just <laughs> phenomenal and of course i had no business really being there but uh but there's great golf is my point and if you i don't know how, you know if you ever leave home uh if you ever make it out west but uh i maybe can't treat you to a round at the riviera but there's some <laughs> decent courses <laughs> out here and we get to play year-round so it's good yeah. I, i'm always ready i'm always go for uh for a golf room very nice very nice well listen patrick it's been great talking with you thank you for taking the time i know you know you're winding things down this is i guess your last hard week because as i told you i was uh just with michael bisbing earlier today and i know you know he was still going pretty hard uh but you know he's going to wind it down this week i'm assuming yeah. you're doing the same yeah exactly uh, big sparring, yeah. MMA sparring, and uh, you know, as far from uh, for the conditioning or uh, con the hard conditioning, it's done. Yeah. It's gonna be more pad work, break a sweat, uh, and only one more hard sparring to uh, Saturday, and uh, after that, uh, it's, that's it. Uh, the weight is good, so it's that, there's no, I have no doubt in my mind. My mind's pretty clear. I'm ready physically, mentally. So, just okay. question of time now. Awesome. Well, this is gonna sound weird, but the next time I see you, you'll be in your underwear. Um, <laughs> I believe I'm anchoring the weigh-in show, uh, so that'll be fun. Uh, looking forward to the fight. You know, Riggs, like I said, is a veteran. You guys are both going to go in there and put on a great show, I'm sure of it. So uh, thanks for taking the time today, and best of luck to you. Thank you very much.